Hello, gamer family, and welcome to my Fire Emblem Awakening map ranking tier list. Anyways, I don't have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton to say, so let's go right in. Anyways, our first tier that we'll be having maps in is I'm a poor stop who hasn't actually played these, and I'm not gonna fake having played them, and I'm only making this video now because I don't really have any intent to play these maps for a long time, since I have no interest in replaying this game now that I can't use the spot pass features tier. Yeah, uh, Paralog 7, Paralog 8, Paralog 11, Paralog 13, Paralog 14, and Paralog 15 are all in this tier. Because I've actually never played them, and I say that with an asterisk, because there is a good chance, I, I don't think I played any of them. There is a chance I actually did play one of them in my last play, and I just cannot remember. And if I can't remember it, I think that means it goes in. If I can't remember the fact that I played it, though, that definitely, to me, sounds like F tier. So anyways, the kids in these paralogs are Brady. I don't think I've ever used him. Kajel, I don't think I've ever. That one, if I have done any of these, that's the one I've done. Uh, Jerome's is Paralog 11, um, uh, Paralog 13, that's Yarn, definitely haven't, Paralog 14, that's Laurent, definitely have never played, and, uh, Noir is Paralog 15, that is also one that po is possible. It is worth noting on the tier list image you'll see at the end of the video, I forgot that Paralog 12 was the Morgan one, so I accidentally put it in this tier as well on that image, but I have fixed it for the actual sake of the video. I have fixed it. I will talk about it. Don't worry. Uh, it's also worth knowing that no, I'm not doing any of the... I am going to be talking about the spot pass maps. I'm not going to be talking about the DLC maps. The Xenologs, I'm not going to talk about. I have played a majority of them, but I haven't played all of them. Um, but I don't think I... Full, if I ever do any map ranking with those and they'll be their own video but since 99% of the maps are old ones I am not going to when I eventually do fates I have not decided I probably won't include them there either though anyways let's start with F tier and right off the bat number 45 premonition the only difference between this tier list and path of radiance tier list is I actually gave this one an F um because this map is essentially the same thing as the prologue in that game. And, you know, they're, they're pretty much nothingness. Anyways, number 44, Paralog 16. I have a bone to pick. This one's here because I have a freaking bone to pick. This map, in all of my Awakening practice runs for the Let's Play, was a dead end to me. This map stopped me for so long, and if my if I made all my practice, my practice was an Iron Man until I got to this freaking map. I just have a bone to pick. I just this map pisses me off. Noah is one of the best units in my opinion. She's one of my favorite units to use. She's not one of my favorite characters in the game, but she is one of my favorite units to use. And this map is just such a pain in the butt. I hate it. Number forty three. Parallel 12, this is the Morgan Parallel. Why is it this low? The fact that I forgot that I had played it, the fact that I forgot that Morgan exists, the fact that I forgot this map exists, I think tells you all you need to know. I remember the Yenfei map with just a title and an image, even though I've only ever played it once. But I'd play this map every time I played Awakening and I forgot it existed to a point or even when I had a spreadsheet with all the chapters listed and paralogs that had the kids men mentions, I still somehow forgot, oh wait, Morgan is a kid that you always get as long as you S support Robin. I still somehow forgot that and forgot that I had played this map. I think that tells you all you need to know about my opinions on this map. I don't like it. I clearly don't even remember it exists. Number 42, Parallel 23, the Radiant Hero. Yeah, this is the uh, Priya map. Uh, this is like the map with the most enemies on screen ever, which is crazy considering Fire Emblem 4 exists. It's also crazy because this map isn't good. I, I've never once had a playthrough where I have enough good units to deploy all the units, so I just do a really tiny group, put them in the bushes, and then hope. Number 41, Chapter 19. 
every other Fire Emblem game, it feels like every other Fire Emblem game has a map that's pretty much just an open plane in the late game. And this game is no exception. Uh, Shadow Dragon has a map like this. Uh, Birthright has a map like this. And you know what? They're not good. There's no reason to play them fast. And the train's not interesting. You may be like, well, and the reason I say that is so that you can't be like, oh, yes, sounds like a Fire Emblem 4 map. Fire Emblem 4 maps have a reason to hurry with villages. Train, they have a, a lot more going on with a different, the way the enemies are placed in that game being more interesting. And castles to seize. Uh, and of course, you also have just the way the different class and inventory systems work that make the units feel nice and different. That all make those maps feel infinitely better than this one. Speaking of, Fire Emblem 4. Number 40, Chapter 22. The only thing I like about this map is the fact that you can get a bunch of the Yugdral Holy Weapons. Besides that, I despise this map. It's, it's literally... A, it's like the, it's pretty much the last map except a desert. Yikes. Now we're in D tier. Um, as, you'll, as you can probably tell, I don't like Awakening's map design. The reason why I enjoy Awakening is for two reasons. One, the game is ridiculously easy, easy due to how overpowered some of the various things are. That's one of those Fire Emblem games that I can just open up and pretty much give my hands something to do. It's definitely, a, it's the most fidgety Fire Emblem game for me. And just thanks to it being on the 3DS, and 3, 3DS at Fire Emblem just feels great to play. So no matter how bad the gameplay is, it feels good to play. And the fact that it's just so easy and you can just, it's so sandboxy, which gives it a very fun feel to it. And also has an amazing soundtrack. And then I just love the broken stuff. Like, I love how broken Robin is. And I love how broken Pair Up. I love breaking this game. Breaking this game is a lot of fun. This is also a great first Iron Man. If you're watching this and you've never Iron Man into a Fire Emblem game before, I think this is the best game to start with because it, it has so much stuff you can exploit. And it's relatively easy. Hard mode... I've never played, I will say, I've never played anything above hard mode. Um, but hard mode awakening is a really fun Iron Man experience if you've never Iron Man before. If you're not good at Fire Emblem, it's the perfect way to start Iron Manning Fire Emblem. And that's another reason why I do love this game. But anyways, D tier, number 39, end game. It's, it's the Binding Blade one, except now there's a crap ton of enemies, and it's long. Like, you have a lot of distance. Like, it, it's literally just a straight line with a crap ton of enemies. Number 38, Parallel 19. This is the Wallheart one. Now, I need to make it clear. Every single spot past Paralog, except for the Priam one, I've only played once. And it's been a while. So my memory may be foggy. But I remember this one being kind of boring and forgettable and not really having anything special to it. I kind of remember it being like, a, pretty much being like Chapter 24, which is already not a good map. But since this is a paralog and you're going to play it after Chapter 24, that to me makes it worse. Uh, next is number 37, which is paralog 20. Uh, this is the Emerin uh, Paralog, and this one just shouldn't exist. And this one I do remember finding annoying. The map itself isn't very fun. Uh, the placement of, like, the enemies. Like, I believe there's a lot of annoying flyers, and I don't like any of that. Number 36, Chapter 13. I just find this map so boring. In this is the main chapter I always forget exists. I always, like, I always forget we don't go right from chapter 12 to the boats. I always forget that there's a map right in between. And, yeah, this is the map you, like, get Lucina in and all that. Like, but, like, gameplay-wise, their enemies are, this is where we start getting promoted enemies, but they're so weak and you're so strong, it's just, like, Boring. Nothing happens. Number 35. Chapter 4. This is literally a flat ground with, like, no terrain. Number 34. Chapter 18. 
This is why two maps is essentially a vertical go from one end of the map to the other in the Volum Act alone. This is the second one, which already makes me like it less, and the volcano mechanic I don't find fun. So I do not like this. I don't like volcano maps to begin with, so this is an uphill map, uphill, uphill battle, since it's practically, it's pretty much just a worse chapter 16. We'll get there. Number 33, chapter 24. It's a bunch of trees and promoted enemies. Yeah. That's really all there is to this one. Number 32, chapter 16. It's the volcano one, except now you're going up and there's no lava mechanics. Wow. Riveting. Number 31, chapter 25. And now, I typically like valley maps, but it's just so boring. This map is just a, a crap ton of strong enemies on all sides. That's all this map is. Cool. This is like the definition of enemy phase. Number 30, chapter 21. This has just always been a map that I kind of find, I don't know, annoying and forgettable. Is This is another forgettable map. The middle game here is so forgettable. Forgettable and like come on like Whenever I see this map, I'm like oh is I, I I always think of that fates revelation map where like you have the different colored floors that change levels Like the promotion status of enemies. No I, I, I Don't know why I always think of that map when I see this one I like that map more than this one. It's that's not a great map either But I like it more than this one. This one's kind of just It's another it's just one of those maps. that's there, but not really, it doesn't really add anything. It's just boring. Filler, even, I'd argue. Number 29, Paralog 3. Out of the Anna Paralogs, this is the one I hate the most. Uh, the village isn't really fun to defend. All the combat and the trees is annoying. It's annoying to save Anna. The train, again, just sucks. Cool. Cool. Number 28, Paralog 22. This is the Versa one. Um, it's kind of just chapter 11 from Three Houses, but it doesn't have the plot going for it, so it's kind of just boring, and I've just, the enemies are not, and there's just nothing I really like about it, so, cool. And number 27, Paralog 6, this is Ingos, uh, and this is, uh, Shadows of Valencia map. This isn't the only paralog that just reuses an old map. But like, at least that one only uses a part of a map. This is literally a map from Shadows of Valentia. And obviously it's a map I don't hate in that game. I, I definitely don't mind it. But like, you couldn't have held off all the fan servicey maps or the DLC and the spot pass maps. C tier. Anyways, I promise I actually don't hate Awakening. I promise, I don't despise Awakening. We're getting there. We're getting the maps I like. We're getting the maps I like. I promise you. I ha I'm going to have positive things to say. Number 26. Paralog 18, Gangrel. You may be like, you just complained about the previous one being a, a, an old map. Yeah, but I also said they could have saved that for the spot pass and DLC maps. This is a spot pass map, so it being the first map of Fire Emblem 3 is actually kind of cool. I actually kind of like it here. I think this this is fun fan service, in my opinion. And the fact that you have to talk to him three, fight him or talk to him three times, I think is also a cool idea for his recruitment. So I actually like this one. It, this We're getting to the maps where I don't hate. These are the maps where I actually am starting to find things fun. That being said, outside of it being an old map and gang, and gang roll himself, there's nothing fun. Those are the only cool things. But there's things I like. Number 25, Paralog 5. I just always kind of found this an annoying map to play. It, not even the map itself, it's just I've always struggled to set up with my units in a way to set me up for success. So I guess this one you could definitely say is a skill issue, but even then it's kind of just boring. The enemies are kind of boring, the actual map itself is boring, and train is fine. The different abilities protecting everybody can be fun, though. There's that. 
Number 24, chapter 23. It's the premonition, but that's the full map, and it's not that much better. You did the premonition part of it. Oh, now it's a route map! I actually think it would have been cool just to have the premonition again. Really, I, I actually think I'd enjoy that more. Number 23, Parallel 2. This is chapter 4 from Fire Emblem 4. Same thing I said for the Inigo map. Except at least here is not the whole map. But still, not the best. Um, is it a little high? Maybe? But I do, I, I always like use this map of like grinding people, like trying to get to like that level 15 Dark Flyer Robin, trying to get to that point. So yeah, it's, it's fine. It's C tier worthy, in fact. Number 22, chapter 11. It's a flat plane with a couple of chests. At least that's a little bit of terrain. Why is this one so much higher than 19? Because it's not in the Volmark. Uh, that's part of it. This is also an important moment, obviously. This is like where you fight gang roll. So, I don't know. Should that really matter? Maybe not, but you get Olivia. That That is true. I was about to say that's not true, but it's true. You get a dancer, which is really handy. And... I don't know, I've always enjoyed this map way more than 19, and I don't really fully know why. Number 21, Chapter 8. A if this wasn't a desert map, it would go in B or A tier. Uh, the villages are fun. Uh, the unit recruitment in the middle of the map is really cool. Uh, so, like, especially on higher difficulty, you have to, like, go save them or do a bunch of stuff. Getting them is fun. Uh, the boss is fun. The enemies, there's like a killer weapon enemy, which can be annoying if you aren't prepared, but can also be fun if you're prepared. I actually genuinely like this map. Uh, number 20, Chapter 9. This is another desert map that I'd actually almost really like if it wasn't one. Um, I think this, this map is another one that I like because it's fun to just Robin spam on. Uh... You also got a recruitable enemy, Atharja. This is like one of the, this is like in the franchise, part of the franchise where we're like, it's kind of saying goodbye to recruitable enemies and, you know, gotta, gotta, gotta rank maps that have recruitable enemies higher just because those don't stay for long. And, you know, I don't know why this one's higher than the previous one. I guess I was too tired when I made this. Number 19, Chapter 1. It's a boring forest map. Number 18, Paralog 9. This is the Sumia daughter one. I actually only played it once and I didn't even realize that Sumia's daughter was her daughter when I first played it, so I got her killed. I th yeah, it was Sumia. I, for some reason, I want to say Cordelia. No, it was Sumia. Um, but the map itself, I actually kind of find fun. It's essentially Chapter 1, but better. More interesting, in my opinion, with it. With the enemies, and of course, I have a child start one of the child units starting as an enemy, which is really I like that. Number seventeen, Paralog four of the end of Paralogs. This is easily my favorite. Uh, I've always found it fun to like get Anna fast and then open all the chests. This is another one of those maps I like grinding on for some reason, and I I I did, I think that's the main reason I like this map. This is a fun one to grind on. I just, I like the structure of this map. And that uh, sounds weird, I know, but I like the structure of it, man. Number 16, chapter 5. I have the same as the previous one. I like the structure of it, man. Uh, I like the, I like where the new units start. That makes it fun to try and get them. Um, and I like how it's kind of the upward build. There's a bunch of ways you could go. You could kind of go like zigzag or you could like go straight up. There's a bu bunch of couple of ways you could approach it, which I do like. Number 15. Chapter 7. Uh, I kind of find it fun that you have a whole part of the map that's only accessible to your flyer unit that you, like, just... One one of which you, like, just got. And all the flying enemies here. There's barely any enemies on land, which I think is really cool. It kind of almost gives it almost, almost an offend map-like feel of, like, oh, we gotta defend these flying units attacking us from the south. And I, I kind of like that feel. Anyways, run to beach here. These are maps I actually like. 
I have lot. I have more positive things to say than I have negative things to say. And yay! Again, like I said earlier in this video, I don't like Awakening for its map design because, frankly, as I look at this map selection, they all kind of just blend together, and they, none of them are that special to me. But I do still love Awakening for a bunch of different reasons. Anyways, number 14, Paralogue 10. This is the uh, Severa one. I've always found this one fun. I like how she goes on her own and you can't really recruit her. So you kind of have to send bodyguards to help defend her. And that's the main reason I like this map. They, it's one of those child paralogs that's slightly different. You don't They don't immediately join you once you talk to them. You have to fight them. And the Yorn one, I believe, I haven't played it, obviously, but that one sounds very interesting, too, because that has, like, huge, like, huge, like, fight. Number 13, Paralog 21. This is the Yenfei one. I don't fully remember why I love this. I don't remember this Paralog almost at all, but I remember when I played this map, I was like, this is actually a really fun one. So, because of that, I'm putting in B tier. Because I remember actually having a Play, I remember playing this map. It was definitely the most fun I had of any of the spot pass maps. And I remember it was one of the fun, most fun parts of that playthrough of Awakening I had. So I had to put it high up. Even though I can't remember a lick of it. <laughs> yeah, can't you tell? Awakening, I don't... I, I, can't you tell? I lo Awakening is my favorite Fire Emblem game. <laughs> Number 12, Paralog 17. This is like one of the few defend maps. And I actually... I get to defend a map. I love defend maps by default. And, yeah, this is no exception. Finding the right way to approach this map was something that took me years. And honestly, what I did in the Let's Play is how I always approach it now. But the fact that it took me so long to find the way that I truly loved is great. And def it's not the best defend map in the franchise, but I still like it. Number 11, Chapter 20. Yeah, I always get this confused with one of the Fates maps. But this is, like, better than the Fates one. So, I don't know what I'm talking about. Watch me rank, do the Fates ranking, and I put that one, like, an 8 for S tier. That would be really ironic. No, I find this map fun. Uh, you have, the, obviously, the optional chest stuff. Uh, sorry, as I'm literally thinking about this map, I keep in my head picturing the Fates version. That's very similar. Um, but I find this fun. I... I do kind of wish he didn't have to fight Wallhart twice. I think that's another reason why I hate that map. Is you fight him there, then you immediately fight him again. And that seems pointless. I think choose one or... You don't need both maps. But I do find this map to be fun. To I, I like castle invading maps, if you can't tell. Number 10, Chapter 14. I like boat maps. That's why this map's high. And again, it's another one of those maps that you could kind of play like a defend map. This game doesn't really have any proper defend maps other than like Paralog 17, which is a shame because there's multiple maps that I think would be either either feel good to play as defend maps would actually just be better as defend maps. And this is one that just feels... It feels like the boat map in Fire Emblem 7, which I actually do like. And I think that's why I like this map because it feels like that. So that's awesome. Number 9. Chapter 12. I like port maps. And this one, this is kind of where the difficulty curve starts in this game. Uh, not difficulty curve, the difficulty spike kind of starts. All of a sudden it feels harder, and I appreciate that. This this, this chapter has a nice feel difficulty-wise to it. And again, I like port maps. I like maps where you kind of start a port, you have to get onto a boat or other way around too. Um, I like the, where you start and how you kind of have to expand in all directions. I like that. I just find that fun design. A tier maps. These are maps I like. These these are good maps. These are solid. Number eight, chapter three. Yeah, you probably weren't expecting this one to be that high, but I like it. I like how it teaches you about door keys. I like how it teaches you about pair up. And this is a fun one to split your army. Is this map is kind of like, hey, splitting your army can have benefits. Here you go. And I think that's fun. I think this is a great map for, the, for beginners on, in that regard. Number seven, chapter two. This is a map that, to my knowledge, like Lunatic Plus is like the bane of the devil. But when you're not playing Lunatic Plus, it's just a nice early game map. It gives you a bunch more units. And it says, hey, here's some new units. Have fun, and I will, and I do. 
But I hate this map in, like, the Fates free DLC. It can die. Number six. Chapter 17. This is the best map in the all... Mac, in the... In the... In the... In the all Mac, except it actually isn't. It's the second best in the all Mac, technically. Ah, uh, this is a fun one. Pharos is a great one-off boss. I've always found her cool. I, I don't know why. Probably because her design... Uh, but she's like one of the, she's one of those like one-off enemies that people seem to really like, and that's cool. And this map has boots and a chest. I remember that. Uh, again, this is one that splits your army, and this is one where it kind of just feels nice to split the army, and there's no reason not to. The enemies aren't absurdly strong to a point of like I don't want to split my army. No, it feels fine. And again, you want to get those chests. And it's a fun map. And we like fun maps. Number five, Paralog 1. I like Donald. I find him fun to use. And the whole gimmick of having to get a level up to use him is actually a really cool idea. And again, it teaches new Fire Emblem players the, uh, the tactic of feeding kills. Like, that's great. I love that. And I feel like a lot of this game, if you look at it also as a lens of a first Fire Emblem game, some of the bad maps or more boring maps stick out better. Number four, chapter 15. This is a kind of a port map as well, and I love them. This is kind of just a fun, this is, I don't, route maps kind of stink in this game, but this is a route map I actually find genuinely really fun to play. Uh, new units, cool. You got the village area, you got the beach area, so you got different types of terrain as well. And this is always just kind of a fun one to just gale force spam to. So I like it! Now we're in S tier. These are actually just overall maps I genuinely think are really good. Number three, chapter six. This should have been a defend map. If this was a defend map, it would be number one. But it's, it's a good map. It, it's, it's a good map. I like playing it like a defend map, obviously. That makes it feel so much more fun. Because it really is a defend map at its core. Number two, chapter 10. One of the best map themes in the franchise. The game plays fine. It gives you a couple of good seals, though. But the boss is really cool. And this map just hits. It hits right. Which is why I put it up here. Uh, Gameplay-wise, should it be this high? No. Am, am I letting story bleed in and that's why this map's that high? Yeah. This is my channel. I do what I want. I don't have a webcam on mine. I'm kind of doing that like sass like head shake thing. Where it kind of wiggles. Anyways, number one, the prologue. This is genuinely, this genuinely may be my second favorite starting map in the franchise. There's only two that come even, there's only three that come even close to that. There's four. There's four first maps that come close. Fire Emblem Forest Prologue is my favorite. Thracia's Chapter 1 is really good, but it also feels like it should be a second map to me and not a first map. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels really overwhelming as a first map. Uh, Advance from Fire Emblem 3, I actually do really like, but this one is definitely better. Um, it wasn't part of my calcula- part of the three- the number I said. Fire Emblem 6 is as good, but this is better. Um, and Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn is very, it's, it's, my first map's pretty similar, but overall, this is probably my second or third favorite in the franchise. This is, and, is that nostalgia? This is the first real map of Fire Emblem I've played. I played the demo like three or four times before I actually bought Awakening, my first Fire Emblem game. So I played this map a lot, and now the three maps you can play which were the Premonition, the Prologue, and I believe Chapter 1. This one always stuck out as, this is fun. This is so much more fun than Fire Emblem Heroes. And I guess this map is what truly, 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 this is what turned the spark into a flame in terms of my love for Fire Emblem. So, I don't know. I, I actually adore this map. This map is actually fantastic. I... I love it. Um, I go pick up your 3DS 
and literally just play to this map. And hopefully you'll be like, yeah. Cool. Anyways, uh, here's the overall trailer list. Like I said, Parallel 12 is in the wrong place. But it also, the fact that I put it there to begin with shows how bad it is, in my opinion. And yeah, um... I think this one's overall really weird. I think my placement's strange, but I can't really justify changing very many maps. Maybe a couple I could justify moving up or down, but there's not a ton that I could like, be like, oh, that's actually way wrong. So, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed. This is actually one of the more longer ones out of the recent ones, but I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time, man. Next week, you two. We got a new Fire Emblem series starting. Oh, yeah.